On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1968. We're going to be taking a look at Ella Fitzgerald and the T. Carson Trio, and they're going to be performing Summertime. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So tonight we are taking a look at the much requested Ella Fitzgerald, the Queen of Jazz, the First Lady of Song. We're going to be having a listen to her isolated vocal and if you guys want to check out the original performance with the accompaniment, then check out the link in the description below as always. So we'll probably listen to it the whole way through and then we'll jump into the analysis after. So we're going to have the pitch monitoring software on screen as well to help point out a few things, but let's jump into it. Summertime. And the living is easy. Fish are jumping and the cotton is high. Yo. And your ma is good looking. So hush, little baby. Baby, do. One of these mornings You're gonna rise up Then you spread your words And you take to the sky but And there we have it. So it is amazing to hear the voice in isolation because you get to hear all of the subtlety in the performance, but in Ella's voice as well. When I'm talking about subtlety, this is such a dynamic performance 
taking you from those extreme lows to the extreme highs. And when I'm talking about dynamics, I'm talking about that volume, the, the change in her voice where she can just lean into her sound if she wants to, but then also hit you with these really delicate notes that she's holding for extended periods of time and applying this really even vibrato, which is really wide as well, which we can see on the pitch monitoring software as we go through the performance. I've just taken it back a little bit to point out this mic position that we've got going on because you'll notice how Ella's holding the mic really high up in front of her nose. And this is totally intentional by Ella. She's controlling the performance from a dynamic perspective, but also getting the mic to where the sound is coming from. If we listen to the first line of the song, we've got Summertime, and she starts out with an even sound distributed between the nose and the mouth. So we have this summertime and we start like that in the mouth time. and as soon as we go to the M we are now in a hum which comes out of your nose so I've said this before in many videos just hum and then close your nose off and the sound will stop so this is why Ella's just holding that mic up higher than you normally would do to get the end of these lines to be the same volume as the beginning of the line. Because you can imagine that if you start having the note just all out of the mouth and then you go to a um, the mic is still at the mouth but it's further away from the nose where now the sound's coming out. So it's a really subtle thing and obviously Ella's just, I mean, she's not being really dramatic with where she's moving the mic up and down. She's just holding it in that sweet spot between her mouth and her nose and probably just towards the end of the lines, just bringing it subtly closer to her nose. So let's have a quick listen from the beginning. Now looking out for it. Summertime. And the living is easy. And there we've got that really low, an octave below where we started. Now with that C sharp three and it even sounds quite low when I do it, and I'm a guy, but it's amazing to hear Ella's range and the depth, that, that quality that she had in the lower part of her range as well. But well, listen to that again, because it sounds like even on the easy, she goes into the e and kind of closes it off into a hum again. It's subtle, but she's definitely still doing that. Fish are jumping. And the cotton is high. And look at her mouth, the way that she says high, which would be high. When you say high, <laughs> your mouth is quite open. High. But it gives you an indication of how much Ella's closing off this sound by how wide her mouth is by the time that she's finished high. She is still saying high here in this picture. So going hum. She's still just transitioning into that hum. But again, it's just that total control from that dynamic perspective of the way that she's using her instrument. And she really did use her voice as an instrument because there are sections here where she just increases the volume, turns it down, and then just leans into her vocals, connects those vocal cords really harshly to the point where it does sound like that horn section, like a trumpet, but the way that she uses her voice, just hitting these really cool jazzy lines, 
It's really like extemporizing like you would on the guitar or any other instrument, but she's just got this ability with her vocal cords to put into practice exactly what she's thinking of that split second and her vocal cords just produce it faultlessly. Just to jump into that bit of the performance, have a listen to this. One of these mornings, And again, in these quieter sections, she's still got a little bit of that hum and the harshness taken out of the sound. But going back, that was your classic a trumpet type line that you would have there. And she's doing this all vocally. So in this part of the performance, we're doing the opposite of a crescendo, which I've mentioned in other videos where you have other instruments that come into the performance. And then in the chorus, you have your crescendo, which is the loudest part of the song. It's the part that really stands out. But here we're going from that really loud place now down to this really subtle quiet place and that's called a decrescendo so it's the exact opposite of a crescendo is exactly what it sounds like and you take to the sky that is something to look out for throughout this whole performance just how open ella's mouth is because by the end of every vocal phrase, pretty much, apart from where we are open dynamically, like we just had a second ago, just laying into it, look at just how closed her mouth is. So it just shows you how much she's controlling that sound all the time. I just want to highlight some of these jazzy lines that we've got going on, a little bit of vocal extemporization here from Ella. Baby, do. And the lines are so expressive as well, very much sounding like an instrument with a the way that she kind of leans into it and then lets go of it is so similar to having a horn section there and somebody using that air to produce a note. That's exactly what we've got going on here with Ella's voice and her vocal cords just allowing that air to go through. So uh, let's have a listen to another one. But There's a nothing can harm you. And I love the way that we started a little bit more jazz to begin with, but then we got into that classic blues. Let's just take it forward a little bit. There's a nothing. It's just that little nah, nah, just taking up that semitone rather than nah, which, yeah, you look, obviously, that's not a blues note there. So it means that you're not going to get the same emotional impact with that note. If you are going to watch the original performance, have a listen to the accompaniment as well, because it is so subtle. I might be able to just bring in a little bit so that we can hear the piano in the background. And the thing to point out about this whole performance is how stripped back it is, but it just allows Ella's voice to sit up front there and for her to draw you into the performance. There's no bells and whistles here. There's no dance routines. It's just a fantastic voice. I know that this video could go on for years, but another thing to look out for is 
the vocal delivery timing wise from Ella because this is really deliberate. She just delays and doesn't give you that vocal line until she wants to and that's just building the tension so that when it does finally arrive it's even more dramatic so there are so many things that Ella did with her voice but her overall performance to make it engaging obviously if you are not just hitting the beginning of each bar I mean this is a really relaxed performance anyway so it's not as if we've got a drummer who's giving us a snare on two and four you can see that he's just got the brushes being really light with it of course dynamically that's what you need in this kind of performance but because there's no strict conformity to the rhythm work it means that Ella can just take you on that journey with her voice and decide exactly how fast that journey is going to be and where it stops and when it starts again so it really does bring you into the performance more because when you're waiting for a vocal line when it doesn't happen you lean in and you're thinking well hang on what's going to happen where's the vocal and then it comes in and it's just drawing you closer to the performance all of these really subtle details that Ella just had total control of but thank you guys for requesting to take a look at Ella Fitzgerald for tonight's analysis video keep those suggestions coming in the comment section below as always let me know what you guys think and if you did enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one rock